So I want to talk a little bit about the changes coming up in storage. We've seen 3D Crosspoint come from Intel, which is this high-performance 3D NAND. So the next generation of Flash, which is 10 times faster than SSDs, I think. Is it 100 or 10 times faster? Uh, you're off by a couple orders of magnitude. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. thought it was like DRAM is one and then 3D Xpoint is 10 times slower and then it's 100 times slower for SSD, whatever the numbers yeah. are. Now, if our storage for, 3D, for, for what it's worth, 3D, uh, 3D crosspoint memory is a thousand times faster than NAND flash. Right. But it's still uh, about, you know, a ten times, times slower than RAM. Yeah. So there's a couple of interesting things coming in there. One is you're talking about storage devices being almost at the same level of performance as DRAM, and we're going to have to build networks that are going to communicate with those because. Uh, companies are no doubt going to build storage arrays with 3D XPoint, even if it's just in the cache layer over SSD in the early days. What does that mean for networks? Now, I understand that 3D XPoint is going to use a new standard called NVMe instead of the old SCSI logic. What does that mean for Ethernet networks? Are we going to talk to them over Ethernet, or are we going to use OmniPath, or are we going to use something else? Are these, these are storage questions. This is fantastic. <laughs> I couldn't be happier. Thank you, Greg. I love it. Okay, let's talk storage. So. Um, <sighs> one, regarding oh, protocols. Um, <laughs> you guys are going to see that I actually, I can do more than organized tech field day. Why isn't the camera on him? Yeah, oh, you guys it is, it's right there. I've got my own camera. Okay. <laughs> There's a side conversation about us all walking out right now. Yeah, sure you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Go get a beer. Um, okay. So, uh, the, the, the most important aspect of this, okay, traditionally um, storage was basically a channel, a SCSI, basically a virtual parallel cable. Yep. Um, iSCSI, fiber channel, it's all just a virtual, fi uh, you know, virtual parallel cable. Um, you know, initiators, targets, all that good stuff. Um, NAS was another abstraction of that. Most of you are familiar with NAS because it runs over Ethernet, because it's be it is inherently a networked protocol. It's a many-to-many -many, you know, network, not just a, an emulated channel. NVMe is totally different. NVMe addresses storage in, in almost in terms of memory. Uh, what that means from a protocol perspective, most NVMe uses PCI Express as the bus that it communicates over. Uh, what that means to network people? Well, goodbye network people. That's one thing that it means. But that's not necessarily the end of the discussion because NVMe could also run uh, iWarp, uh, Rocky. You know, you can run this stuff over 10 gig Ethernet, over faster Ethernet. And, and there's actually a big movement in the industry not to go all the way from networked storage arrays on the other end of the network somewhere to you know, local storage inside the server, but to go somewhere halfway. And what I call that is uh, top of rack storage, top of rack flash. Mm -hmm. That's a big movement in the industry. Um, EMC has a product called DSSD that is exactly this. Uh, other vendors have products that are very similar to that. Uh, think basically of a rack scale ultra high performance network. And that rack scale perform high, uh, you know, network is going to either use PCI Express outside the chassis, which is one thing that Intel's working on, or it's going to use InfiniBand, or it's going to use 100 gig Ethernet. OmniPath. Or it's going to use OmniPath, mm. or it's going to use one of these things. And so for, for, for your perspective, in terms of where is storage going, well, one place storage is going is nowhere. It's going to continue to use network storage just like it does today, because not everything's going to go to this top of rack model. Um, and similarly, some of it is going to go inside the server, which is not important for you. Mm. But this middle. This middle ground is a big question because you could find yourselves running an advanced rack scale storage network in a few years uh, with either a totally new protocol, protocol or with Ethernet, or it could be another situation like Fiber Channel where your hands are just off of it, yeah. you know, where the storage people pretend to well, run a network. We used to build PCI networks back in the day. So there was companies like Vitensis, mm -hmm. and they put, uh, I don't know how many people are aware of, but PCIe is actually a network. By the way, a tech field day company, I'd like to point out. Yes. <laughs> Long gone, yeah. however. So PCI, you could actually put a card into the bus and then connect them together and actually build a network out of PCI buses, mm -hmm. if you were so inclined. It never really took off. And the idea is to share peripherals across a PCI backplane. Um, so that's where that's talking about. OmniPath is a new backplane that Intel's trying to promote as a high-speed interconnect, really, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And, and 
one of the uh, you know familiar aspects of this um, you know that, that makes it real is that many of us are already using essentially uh, outside of the box PCI Express. It's called Thunderbolt, mm -hmm. and all of Intel's developments are actually related to you know what's in every MacBook. And so this is not just some pie in the sky dream that we might have ultra high speed external NVMe memory. Mm. It, it, it exists. And the, the benefits are just tremendous because it is much, much faster. Than and the other thing about... One very unqualified question here, yeah, to step in. We, in networking, we just make more speed, 10 gig, 40 gig, 100 gig. The current fiber channel couldn't it also be done just faster? Or yeah. is there a need that we have a technology change here? Is that needed or can we just do the traditional fiber channel in faster? Yeah, that's a great point. Fiber channel has doubled in performance traditionally, where Ethernet has multiplied by 10. And so it used to be that fiber channel was very, very impressive because we were doing two or four gigabits when you guys were still sitting there at 100 megabits or one gigabit. Now it's a lot less impressive because we're sitting there at four or eight gigabits while you guys are laughing at 10. And Fiber Channel has basically a choice. It can either jump on the Ethernet bandwagon and adopt the economies of scale of Ethernet, which is FCOE, and there's also native Fiber Channel over the same physical layer at 10 gigabits, for example. Or uh, we can just use a different protocol because there are reasons that you might not want to continue with fiber channel. It's a very, very heavy protocol if you don't need all this stuff that it's doing. There's a lot of reasons that you might not want fiber channel. I'm sorry, Jay. I know you're, yeah. you're crying right now. Um, it, it seems that the industry is moving away from fiber channel, and one reason is NVMe, because you want a much lighter weight, uh, you know, lower latency. Low overhead. Low overhead. Fiber channel has a vast amount of dependencies in the network and in the host, mm -hmm. and that re translates into cost. It's like the old token ring technology of years and fitty of years gone by. They relied on smart network adapters and smart switches in the network, and the cost of building those things was much was high, and we customers chose Ethernet because it was simple and cheap. And well, the current what is state the, of the art. The current mm -hmm. maximum speed for fiber channel is 16 gig? Yeah. Yeah, 8 or 16. 16, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, but this current state of the art thinking in storage is to move to an RDMA model where a CPU can directly write the memory of another CPU across a, well, network, you know, a specialized network. And that's, you know, really what Rocky is. That's what NVMe is. That's, what, that's where storage is going. And uh, Fiber Channel theoretically could be used for RDMA transfers, but nobody's going to. It's going to go to IP, or it's going to go to Ethernet directly, or it's going to go to PCI Express. So the second question I have is that uh, 3D Crosspoint, and there are other technologies coming along which are the 3D NAND RAM mm -hmm. type stuff, um, is also permanent storage. So it's no uh, write after read, there's no refresh, so it's permanent. Uh, does that change the network? And I mean, maybe we can also talk a little bit about how the server architectures are going to change when we don't have to write the DRAM to disk or save to disk. It's just going to be permanent. I think that that's a very, very good point because that does change server architecture. I don't think it necessarily changes network architecture, but it certainly does change server architecture. I mean, originally, um, before we had this conventional system where you had RAM that is volatile, and storage that is non-volatile. We used to have non-volatile memory. Core. Core. <laughs> and those systems looked very different. And mm -hmm. the way that you used those systems, the way you programmed them, the way you turned them on and turned them off and, mm -hmm. and changed what they're doing looked very different. Um, you're right. Uh, 3D Crosspoint, one of the benefits of it, which, by the way, is uh, it, it's, it's very, very different from just like 3D NAND. It's a, mm. it's a real different technology. But the point being, when Intel talks about 3D Crosspoint, they're talking about basically another tier of memory within the server. So you'd have, mm -hmm. you know, kind of uh, ignoring the caches, like a tier one that's DRAM. You'd have kind of a tier two that was 3D Crosspoint and is more capacity, non-volatile, high performance. And then you'd maybe have tier three, which could be storage, conventional storage. That changes everything about server architecture. It changes everything about operating system architecture. Mm. And it could theoretically change everything about networking as well. 
it, so it's basically thing. it's basically turning memory into an HSM, a hierarchical storage mm -hmm. system. Yeah, hierarchical memory is what it really right. is. Yes. So the, the the question I have, which is I've been thinking about for a while, is a lot of networking equipment involves um, you know DRAM loading from a disk drive. If we had the ability in say a network switch to just run an operating system, which is just the memory is the storage and IoT. So if we start to think about wireless access points or uh, smart watches and stuff like that that currently have CPUs and memory and flash storage, does that change those? So we could replace DRAM and, and SSDs with just 3D point in IoT functions and those operating systems will be much simpler, use less power and just generally be much more awesome. Absolutely. And in fact, I think it's important to realize that most of the ARM-based devices that we use, most of the things that we would call IoT, mm -hmm. are predominantly using NAND flash mm -hmm. um, as a hybrid of memory and storage already. Mm. I mean, most of these devices have very, very little RAM. They do have some. Mm. And most of these devices have no disk or tape or punch card storage. I mean, I don't think there's <laughs> a lot of risk of finding that. They're using embedded NAND flash, and 3D Crosspoint would be a fantastic match for those devices. In fact, it would, be so, it would be great because what they could do, if you were Intel, for example, you could develop a CPU that had integrated Crosspoint memory and just, we're done, that's the entire system architecture. Right. We don't need storage, we don't need RAM. I don't it's think there. they could do both on the same die. I think the manufacturing is quite challenging. But they could pair them both on the oh, same yes. uh, module, right. yes, on the same unit, yeah. and then they'd be great. And that would be fantastic. It would be very low power, because mm -hmm. again, you're not doing any kind of refreshes of the, of the memory. Um, and not only that, instant turn, you know, it would turn on instantly, just like the computers of the 70s. You turn power off. it back on, and it's right where it was when you left it. Would it would turn off instantly, so you could power down between Mm -hmm. you know, on instructions. Side, between instructions, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no refresh to refresh the DRAM. There's no mm -hmm. things. I just, that's what I think. So is there uh, anything Now you'd have like to take the CPU registers and either back implement, up, yeah. e either back them up or, or make them the same kind of memory, but you'd probably not want to use the same kind of memory if it's that much slower. I guess the you could implement them in SRAM, but I'm no chip uh, designer. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you could put that on the same die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah, th th there's remarkable things that you can do with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I guess it's interesting if you think of storage not being part of the network. We've talked about converging storage onto the network in the data center, particularly. And now, if 3D Crosspoint changes that metric into you, and NVMe means a different network that's fit for that purpose and putting the storage at the top of the rack, mm -hmm. that does change some of the dynamics in the data center architecture. Mm -hmm. It means no more hard drives inside of chassis could be one way out. Yeah, and, and in this future architecture where you had like a top of rack mm. NVMe device um, or even in server NVMe, uh, you'd probably also still have bottom of the rack bulk storage, mm -hmm. but it would be lower in the HSM chain than right. storage currently is. Mm -hmm. Instead of being something that is accessed on a, you know, <laughs> microsecond by right. microsecond basis, it would be something that might be accessed ah, on a so you, second by second or minute by minute basis. So I could imagine there's a NVMe storage, top of rack storage that's etherneted to a spindles and SSDs somewhere. Mm -hmm. Or the server is. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's doing it directly. Right. Yeah. Now, NVMe is, is more like a, an abstraction of a disk system, so it looks more like memory. Is that... Yeah, NVMe specifically kind of what I means got out of which, how you um, it. memory. It's, it's a different protocol, so instead of accessing it um, as a fake disk, so SCSI is just device. a fake disk. Mm -hmm. It says, hey, yo, I'm in regular disk, even though it's actually a whole storage array full of disks. Sex is blocks and heads. NVMe is not block storage. Right, that's, that's what I'm asking. That's yes. the fundamental difference here between mm -hmm. these protocols. Right, okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Foskett, for joining us today to talk storage. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. You, I, I can't express how happy I am that you asked me something I'm qualified to speak on. Oh, my goodness. All right, and, wireless. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. And if you'd like to learn more about 3D Crosspoint, I think that you should probably tune in when Intel presents at Storage Field Day 9 in March, because I have a feeling I know what they're going to talk about. And if anybody else wants some information on NVMe and 3D Crosspoint, let me know, and I'll share a bunch of uh, PDFs I got 
Uh, I was <clears throat> lucky enough to be invited to a Oregon with Intel, and I have a bunch of PDFs that I could share with you if you're interested. Yeah. I'll, I'll oh. them out there for you. Excellent. Uh, same to the audience, by the way. If anybody at home wants them watching along, uh, just get in contact with me via Packet Pushes, and I'll happily send them to you. They're not secret. Well, thank you, Ben. I, I'm, I'm just, I, I can die happy now. <laughs> <laughs>